Hello there. You are tuned in to Almost 30 Podcast. We love you guys. Welcome. We it's love you guys. Lindsay and Krista. We are real life, seriously best friends. We are. It's true. Actually <laughs> besties. I asked mine of my, I have, I've actually done this twice with two people that I know mm. where I've been like, I've asked them, who's your best friend? And they're like. You're so weird. <laughs> no, literally. They're like, I'm a full blown adult. <laughs> They're like, I don't have like a best friend. I just have a bunch of friends that I love. And I'm like, I'm 10. <laughs> I, I'm, You're like, but who's your best friend? No, honestly, but I'm like, put them in a hierarchy. <laughs> Am I Hit in them your inner circle? Each other? Yes. Well, I just, was, it was just so funny. I was like, wow, I think I'm a 10 year old. Well, I feel like now as adults, it's like inner circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Type vibe. Yeah. Of like, this is who I trust to like tell all my stuff to yes. and or can lean on and moments of despair yes but yes. yeah i feel you so today's episode is a part two of our conversation with Miriam hasna someone that i very much admire someone whose work has inspired my life and mm -hmm. really really helped me through new earth mystery school she's the creator and founder of new earth mystery school and resonance apothecary she's an intuitive a channel an energy healer and she is super super powerful so powerful it was so nice to be with her in person. She flew down to LA and we just got some very nice, juicy, intimate time with her and really, you know, met her where she is at and allowed the conversation to flow where I think intuitively we all knew it should flow for you all listening. Um, in today's episode, we talk about relationships. Part two is very much relationship centric, talking about relationship templates that are old dead and dying and the new ones coming in which is super fascinating yeah i loved thinking about that as a collective what relationship templates are we working from how do we view relationships now and one of those was for her that she talked about was having just one person mm -hmm. having one soulmate one person that's gonna you know complete you or one person that's gonna be um that person for the rest of your life she also talked about the old template of women being submissive to men mm -hmm. and sort of how that's outdated and um, ending and then we also talked about the templates that are coming in so how can we be the people that are creating these new beautiful templates of love and divine union of freedom and expression and then what we can expect um, as it relates to relationships over the next couple years or even you know many years in time mm -hmm. and then we also talked about 2023 some of the energetics for yes. 2023, the visions that she's seen, what she sees coming for us in 2023. So for someone as powerful as her, I was taking notes, honey. Yeah, it was so... I actually cannot wait to listen to this back again. Um, if you love this episode, please share it with a friend. It's super important that you, know, you take concepts and topics and curiosities that are important to you and bring it into your intimate relationship. So this is a great way to do it. Um, Miriam has just beautiful offerings. Her etheric gardening is happening now, um, as well as the New Earth Mystery School. She has her apothecary. Um, so you can find all of that at mariamhasna.com. Yes, enjoy this one. Thank you for being a part of our lives and community. Almost30.com for our courses and programs, for our blog, for resources, for our sponsor codes and partnership information. And then Almost 30 Podcast on TikTok and Instagram. Make sure you're mm -hmm. following us there. And you can find me on Instagram at It's Krista. And I'm at Lindsay Simsek. We love you. We love you guys. <laughs> See you soon. I am so excited to announce Modern Tarot. So if you're like me, you like to use different tools and resources and support to help you connect more deeply with your intuition, to experience magic and synchronicities in your life. And I feel like I've been working with tarot decks for years. It actually was the inspiration for bringing through the Activation Tarot, which is part of the Modern Tarot brand. And I wanted to bring tarot to the modern age. I felt like other decks didn't really have the modern edge. They weren't like clean, organic, elevated, sexy, and cool. And so I thought I would make my own decks. So Modern Tarot is my brand that has two different decks, the Law of One Tarot, which is inspired by the book, The Law of One, which is a channel text that is beautiful and powerful and has changed my life. And then the Activation Tarot, which is your normal 78 card tarot deck. These are super special. It's like a beautiful matte material. The cards slide just right. They're the perfect size. There's a little magnet on the box that keeps it closed. The booklets are gorgeous and designed and inspired by all of the magic that comes through the study of archetypes. 
These decks are super special. I took my time with them. I was really intentional with them and I'm so excited for you to experience them. So you can go to moderntarot.com to check out the decks. There's the activation tarot and the law of one tarot and get into your magic today. I just got my package in the mail of my Symbiotica monthly delivery and y'all, it is good. They have so many new products that I'm really excited about. Let me tell you about my like normal haul and then let me tell you about what I'm excited about trying. So normally I get their allergy defense, which is a really powerful way to support my allergies, which I have all the time. I really love their magnesium. It's a liposomal delivery magnesium that tastes like French vanilla. Magnesium helps me sleep, helps me with stress, helps all these powerful cellular functions in my body. I really love their adrenal tonic, which is really, really good to support my adrenals. And I also really love their zinc complex. They have amazing products that have changed my life, but I'm really excited about these new ones. I'm really excited to start taking creatine. So creatine, I think, is going to be the big thing for the new year for people and girlies that are working out, that want boosts in their athletic performance, that want help with their recovery time, and for beautiful skin and brain cognition. Creatine is something that's kind of got this weird reputation in the space to make you super bulky or all these things, but I've noticed that it is what all of the girls that have the bodies that I want are taking. So creatine is another thing that I'm taking in the liposomal delivery from them. And I'm also really excited about their metabolic health. So metabolic health and metabolism is super important for feeling good in our bodies and having the right body composition. It also helps your appetite control and fat oxidation. So this product, metabolic health, is really exciting and new from Symbiotica. So Symbiotica is super mindful about the quality. They have really, really cutting edge formulations. And it's something that I take all the time. It's something that almost all my friends take. They're super, super powerful. So I'm excited for you to dig into Symbiotica as a brand that you can use and love. You can use code ALMOST30 at Symbiotica.com. That's code ALMOST30 at Symbiotica.com for 15% off your purchase. So use code ALMOST30 at checkout for 15% off your purchase. And if you do a custom bundle discount, you get 45% off. So just so we can be clear, if you do a custom bundle discount with this code, you could get 45% off. So the custom bundles will really hook you up. You get 45% off with the almost 30 code with those custom bundles. So you can mix and match to get something that you love. So symbiotica.com slash discount slash almost 30. Symbiotica.com slash discount slash almost 30. I wanted to talk about, because you mentioned um, that inner child and picking romantic partners, for example, is not, yeah. not the way. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people in our community, they ask a question quite often of us, you know, if our partners, whether it's long term or maybe they're dating and they sense they are or see and experience that they are not necessarily growing, evolving mm -hmm. with them, it doesn't have to be at the same rate, but there's kind of that feeling of like, oh gosh, am I going to spiritually, emotionally kind of grow past this mm -hmm. person? I'm curious what you've learned in relationship related to that so much <laughs> <laughs> how much do we're talking we're about? listening girl <laughs> how much we're talking about? um wow this question um you know i have my whole life had relationships that are nothing like anyone that i know mm. You know, I've never had those experiences where I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of dating this person. And da, 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 da. No, 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 no. It's always been this like deeply transformative, transcendental. And I'm like, what is this? Wow. <laughs> you know, it was just always this point where I'm like, oh, so I'm just supposed to die in every relationship, mm -hmm. like multiple times. Is that is that what this is, right? Mm -hmm. And then I would go through periods where I would be not in relationship at all. And then I would have this like really profound experience. And some of them short term, right? Some of them not meant to um, be long term at all whatsoever. Um, there was not, as far as I knew, <laughs> there was not a framework or explaining like these experiences that I was having. Um, so I definitely had to really dive deep into the nature of like, what is it that I'm doing in relationships that's not necessarily the same as what I see other people doing? Um, and is that working for me? What part of it would I like to change? How much agency do I have in it? At some point, um, I learned 
that a lot of my um, spiritual curriculum comes through romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. So that was one piece that I was like, oh, check. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, And I've learned that a big part of my work in this lifetime is to bring in and anchor new relationship templates for the Aquarian age. So we're moving out of a lot of these old relationship templates, um, opening up ourselves to new ways of relating, new ways of connection, new ways of collaboration. And so because of that, it like required me to go through all of these really profound experiences with meeting people the synchronicity around how i've met people is unbelievable i've had dreams of people and then met them just meetings where you know it's orchestrated you know and so at some point when i started doing deeper akashic work deeper past life work looking at my contracts looking at my agreements i really had to because i really needed to understand Like, okay, what is this paper doll thing? What is it meeting the same person again Mm -hmm. and just in a different body? What's that about? What is that showing me? So for me, after every relationship, I would do a really intense debrief. You know, I would really look at what was that about? You know, what was that? What was the lesson? What was that here to teach me? You know, did I learn it? How did they show up? You know, if I showed up fully and I honored my contracts and I honored my agreements, but they didn't, what does that mean? And where does that leave me? And da, da, da. so because of that, I've learned so many things about soulmates. I've learned so many things about karmic relationships, karma with people, um, why we come together, how we come together, how we call people in. And I I'm at a point now in my life where I'm pretty much genuinely always looking at the agreements and the contracts that I have with people as I go in um, to understand what are we here to do, what's available. Um, But to your question about outgrowing people and recognizing that you're not learning, I think one of the most fundamental things that I would love people to understand that Someone being your soulmate does not mean they're meant to be your life partner. Mm-hmm. And and <laughs> I personally, through everything I've seen, everything I've experienced, I don't believe that for the most part, most of us have not written our contracts that we have one potential partner. Mm-hmm. So not to bust anyone's bubble, right? There are agreements. There are contracts that people write where they only have the one. Like I have the one, but the reality of it is like sometimes that person chose not to incarnate. You can have an agreement with a soul that they'll be your person. And then when it comes down to it, they choose not to incarnate. What do you do then? You know, you have this longing for the one and they're not even in a body. So there's all of these, this is complex web Mm. of what we can write an agreement or a contract to do but the other person has free will the other person has the ability and what i always try to inform people and say is if you meet a soulmate and they don't want a soulmate don't worry (laughs) someone else will another one will like you your your vaster self your team your guide your angels you know your akashic keeper is going to be creating opportunities for you to have the most optimal experience that you are available for that you set out for right and if someone else doesn't show up for their quote unquote part to me it's really important to honor that to validate that to accept that to like lovingly like let them go let them be where they're at Because I find that the more you respect other people's freedom, the more you respect free will. For me, freedom is a really important core value in life. That means that I will never try to like trap anybody in something. I will never guilt. I will never force. I never, right? It's always, it's only if you choose it. Mm. It's only to whatever degree you choose it. And from that degree, I get to decide, does this work for me? 
You know, that paradigm of trying to save people, trying to wait for people, or trying to, 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 again, I had to go through those lessons. You know, I had to go through um, the realization that I had a, you know, a soulmate, a potential life partner, that we got to a certain point of leveling up and there was a choice. And I was, um, you know, we were discussing it on a on an inner plane level, but we were also talking about it on an outer plane level. And this was right at the time when my purpose started to come online. And I knew it. I said I could either choose this person and sort of level out here or I could choose my path and I don't know what they're going to do. They could opt out. They could decide they don't want to. Da, 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 da. For a moment, I said, you know, I think I'm going to choose them because we have all these lifetimes together and we've been journeying together and da, 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 da. It came in like a tower card moment. And that colli- that timeline collapsed. You know, people don't talk about this a lot, but people can actually devolve. People can go more unconscious. And so because I decided to choose like ascension, they decided to go more asleep. Mm. You mm. know, and I I had to step back and like, basically surrender and not take it personal. At some point I started to feel, and I, and I realized this later because I said, I don't even feel like I know this person anymore. Why does it not, why does it feel like the person that I fell in love with isn't there? And when I look deeper into it, like a part of their higher self, like decided to kind of like disconnect mm-hmm. And they are, you know, who knows what they're going to do? Who knows if they will go through another awakening later on in this lifetime? It'll it'll be another lifetime. And it was essentially on a soul level, they said, you know, if if I'm not guaranteed, because I said, once we level up, we may not choose each other. That's the reality. We don't know what's going to happen when we level up. We may have gotten to this point where we were meant to get each other to this point And then go our separate ways. And on a soul level, he said, if you're not a guarantee, I'm not doing it. So he was going to choose it for me, which is the wrong reason. I wouldn't have chosen him once I leveled up. That's what I realized. So on a soul level, he did what was best for him. I did what was best for me. And it took me a couple years of really looking deeply into the records to understand because no one was talking about this kind of stuff. Mm. No one was talking about the kind of complex things that happen with our agreements and how there's so so many choice points that we can take, right? And I've had people that have decided not to level up at that time and I wish them the best. And then later they come back around, right? They do their own work. But because I had so many lifetimes where I would wait for people, I would, you know, carry people, I would let them ride on the back of my dragon. And this is one of my first lifetimes where I'm not doing that. I'm just going for it. And I'm like, whoever's on the level is on the level. I keep meeting, right, like soul family that's like, well, wait a minute. In other lifetimes, you like waited for me. In other lifetimes, you didn't abandon me all these stories and so i've had to move through right all of these narratives about me choosing freedom and me choosing awakening that i are new to me right in this lifetime and again you keep meeting people and you're like yeah i know you yeah we've had lifetimes and i'm up to something different in this lifetime you you know me you don't know this version of me. Mm. So I've had to have that conversation when I meet people and I recognize that we know each other. I've at this point, I've had to say, let me tell you who I am now. Mm. You know, I'm not carrying anyone. I'm not. Da, 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 da. Here's what I am available for. Here's what I will do. So if and when we get to that point where I'm going to level up, I'm going to level up. You know, it's all love. 
love you eternally. Mm-hmm. See <laughs> you next lifetime. Next, yeah. Meet you on the next go round yeah. or not. <laughs> but I'm, I'm like, at some point I was like, I'm going to go for it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to let the fear of yeah. losing people hold me back because I want to see what I can do. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know? Wonderful. So that's me choosing freedom. Mm. And like, it's an experiment. Um, trusting what happens and along the way, hopefully inspiring people, inspiring people that know me that, you know, I've had different responses to that. Some people are resentful of that. Um, some people love it. They're like, do it. I love this for you, you know? Mm -hmm. So I've had, and it's taught me a lot of, about entitlement, about how people feel, well, you're, you're a soulmate and I recognize you and I know you. So I'm like, but I don't owe you mm-hmm. choosing you i don't owe you being held back for you and having to find the language lovingly and kindly to be able to say i'm here for you but here's what that looks like and that's not because it's not coming from compassion but it's because i'm a pioneer in this mm-hmm. lifetime and i'm a way shower and i'm a pathfinder and because of that it's like the mission's first mm-hmm. You know, and to to be, you know, to be for me, you know, who's like at the end of the day, like totally a lover. But to say, actually, like what I have realized is that like doing my path this way in this lifetime and having kind of moved through so many relationships that had that soul recognition. I've learned what true love is. You know, I've learned what true love is when it's not about a contract. It's not about an Mm -hmm. attachment. It's not about a you owe me. It's I love you enough that it's not about being in union. It's not about your mind. It's not about holding on. It's a letting go. And yeah, my heart has had to adjust Mm -hmm. to that. Um, But it's allowed me to just like to see love in a completely different lens Mm -hmm. and to give to tell people free you don't owe me anything you're not obligated to stay i want you to do what is right for you what you feel because i need the same thing in return i need to be able to be free and however that looks you know that's the that's the only like contract that i'm honoring now so i've had to break a lot of vows um that's really deep work i've had to find vows that i said i'll be yours for all of eternity I'll always find you. I'll always wait for you. I've I've had to find to be able to do what I'm doing. I had to find and like disintegrate a lot of contracts, a lot of agreements, mm-hmm. a lot of vows that would have kept me bound um, to certain people. Mm. And <laughs> and you do that work Later. in the akashic. I do it through energy healing. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. You can we can have cords with people from other lifetimes. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, So finding those places of connection, clearing and healing the karma, Mm -hmm. finding those contracts in the Akashic, rewriting them um, and opening up new doors, Mm -hmm. you know, using that to open up new doors of possibility and potential um, of choice. I've had a lot of teachers that I've worked with say, you have already gone way beyond what your original curriculum was for this lifetime. <laughs> you're kind of just like a free, free agent. Like, like you can just, find the island. Yeah, now. like you're just a free. You're just a free agent because like the lessons you set out to do, you've already moved through them. So you can think about it. If I said in a lifetime as a soul, here's how much I think I can do, and here's a life partner that I think I would have if that's what I can do, and I already like moved past that. What do you do, right? Do you stay with Mm -hmm. that person? (laughs) No, because it's like you're already in a new lifetime within this lifetime. Yeah. So that's that's really Mm. where I'm at. Um, And in general, I have been doing the work to be contract free. Mm. With someone who devolves, do you think they're devolving, or do you feel like? Because I've thought I'm like, are, do you have an entity that's like attached or working through mm. you or a bug or like some sort of, yeah, I've always been curious about that. I'm like, do you have, is more of your higher self leaving your body? Do you have something that is attached or working through you or like are your center, like what's sort of happening? Because I do yeah. feel like we've seen a lot of that happen. 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, in the context that I'm referring to it, it's, you know, one of the experiences that I had, for example, was a walk-in, yeah. right? Um, and can I, you explain what that is? Yeah, so I had an experience where um, an aspect of my vaster self, my soul, right, my infinite self, sort of saw what I was doing, creating, where I was at, and it incarnated. So it, that part of me didn't incarnate at birth. It incarnated further along the journey, mm-hmm. right? So another part of me came into this incarnation. Some people call it a walk-in, right? Some people call it a braid-in, where like different parts of your soul kind of like weave into each other and not we're always connected to our vaster self right we're always able to receive guidance receive message receive healing the entirety of who we are doesn't incarnate into a lifetime but in the particular experience that I'm talking about the level up that I was going to take right to step into this work to step into my mission and to show up right, as a pioneer in, in, in the transformation of, like, what's going on with Earth's consciousness right now into the Aquarian age, you know, more of me needed to be here. So that work, you know, we have to prepare the body for that, right? Our body, our vessel, our vessel, our life, because our soul is like, mm, I'm not going to incarnate if you are living in Trash. squalor, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, or whatever, right? So Freaking it's like, monster energy you know, every day. Is this, is the, are the circumstances like congruent with another aspect of you stepping in and kind of being like, now we're about to really take off. Yeah. So that happened with me. And again, a lot of the things that happened with me, I had no idea what was happening at that time. I was going through things. Um, didn't have even teachers at that time and was um, working it out myself. And then later I would I would come upon a concept or a term and I would say, that's what that's what I had, you know, and there'd be there's more people talking about walk ins and braid ins and stuff like that now. So the same way that an aspect of your soul can incarnate, right, an aspect of your vaster self can also walk out. So that means less of who you are is present in your incarnation. So you have less of your soul energy present. So you're not you're operating more from like the personality, the identity, the ego that that may look like you not following your your dharma, you not meeting up with those divine appointments. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have an entity or anything like that. It just means that there was a decision on a soul level that for whatever reason at this time, you weren't going to progress in a way where you you needed to have um, more of your soul energy present, mm. right? And there's so many reasons why a soul might do that, right? Um, obviously, there's a lot of souls that are choosing to transition out right now, right? So a lot of souls are saying, I did what I needed to do and I'm going to move on. And some souls are reincarnating really quickly, Um, Other souls are saying, I don't think it's going to happen. Let's transition out, maybe start over, right? So there's all kinds of valid reasons why um, a soul can do something. Your soul could say, for example, maybe you're not going to necessarily like progress through becoming more conscious, but maybe we can use this lifetime to clean up some karma, so that means you may have a lifetime where you actually have a lot of really challenging experiences, but what that's doing is it's kind of taking care of some of the back end work to kind of get you up to speed so that you're, it sets you up for your next incarnation, that you have more choices of where you would incarnate, the situation that you would come into. So, um, you know, that word devolve is my word. There may be a better word for it um but that's how i experienced it because the part of myself that really recognized this person and really knew this person i just started to feel like they weren't there i'm like i don't feel like i know this feels like a completely different person and granted i changed right i was a different version of myself that they didn't really know but eventually i just kept asking the same question like why 
why don't I feel that mm-hmm. recognition? Sure. And then it was shown to me like, yeah, you are still in relationship with their higher self. Mm-hmm. You know, you are still in relationship with that part of them that that isn't incarnated. But where they are operating on a personality level, no, you don't know them. It's, it's like relieving and also mm-hmm. it's like, whew. I don't it's know. It's sad. Yeah, it's sad. It's, like a, lot of grief. it's a lot of things. It's I have just a lot, a lot of things around that. Yeah, it is. There definitely grieving is valid. I think for me, how I eventually arrived, because I was like, why would you do that? Like, at first, I was like, yeah. why? In the yes. hell? <laughs> but then I was like, oh, yeah, like everyone's journey is valid mm-hmm. and sacred. Mm-hmm. And, and again, because my core value is to respect people's choices on a soul level that their soul knows what they need better than me Mm -hmm. i could easily kind of be like you abandoned me and you we were Mm supposed no because again that means that there's another door opening up for me Mm -hmm. that they were in a way in the way of Mm -hmm. totally i had that had that experience and what i noticed was i couldn't see them yeah like energetically it was hard for me to actually see them Mm -hmm. because there was so much static in the way Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then i noticed we would be pulled more apart like our lives were just kind of pulling us apart and i was like oh Oh, we're not vibrationally a match anymore 100 percent, because we're not you know we're kind of going in different paths so i was like huh this is interesting how we can't really be in the same space yeah and i can't see you yeah i can't actually get access to who you are yeah and sometimes with people like that you because again, there's aspects of us that are still, we like on a soul level, we're cool, right? Mm-hmm. You might still in the inner realms, like on the astral realm, like you might still be kicking and hanging out with them mm-hmm. in other realms, but on a personality level, you have no relationship. Mm-hmm. What are some, I wanted to ask you, what are some of the old templates that were, that you went through that were sort of moving beyond as a collective and what are the new ones that we're moving into? Yeah. That's an exciting question. You know, it's interesting because there were things that I tried on in relationships that never really fit, but I was like going along with, you know, the status quo or whatever, or I was, I was really in a way like, I was never boy crazy. I remember having like being young and having friends that were like, boys, a boys, a boys. And I was just like, yeah, whatever. And I was never like, I can't wait to have a boyfriend. And I did it. Mm. You know, I was always reluctant. And I was always that way. Even whenever I meet someone, I'm always reluctant. I'm like, I don't know. I'm busy. I Mm -hmm. I blah, 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 blah. Even like the younger version of me, before I was like mission oriented, you know, I was still mission oriented. I was just like, I have other things to do. I'm busy. Like, you know, so I was, I I wasn't playing hard to get, but I was really hard to get. And um, because of that, I didn't have a lot of experiences with guys. So I was really naive. So when I would meet someone and I would eventually like open up and be open to like intimacy, I love mm. intimacy, but to me, intimacy could be like holding hands, mm-hmm. like, you know, staring each other's eyes, mm-hmm. like what other people, because of, I guess, my high sensitivity and how sensitive I was to energy, I could get so much from just being with someone, being in their presence. So the need for so much physical intimacy, intimacy and like you belong to me and your mind and possessiveness. I really did not understand those things, right? And I always was in a way made to feel like there was something wrong with me because I wasn't chasing a guy or because I wasn't, you know, or if a really like attractive, great guy was was into me, I'd be like, ah, oh, whatever, you know? And um, so I would, I found myself giving relationships opportunities that I wasn't necessarily aligned with. I wasn't necessarily excited about. I didn't necessarily feel as strongly about them as they felt about me. But as you said, I would sometimes get caught up in how strong their feelings were for me and feel as if that meant that's what it was supposed to feel like. So that's for sure one of the old templates, right? Of like, like one person is certain and the other person just kind of goes along. It's like the right. waiting to be chosen one. 100%. That I think women do a lot. Where they're oh, like, yeah. he said this about me. He said he wants to. It's like, what do you want? Right. Yes. What do you want? Hello. Yes. Right? Like, where are you at in this? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a big one. Another big one is the probably one of the biggest ones that I, I, I'm like, please, let's get this out of here. 
this idea that the woman is supposed to be submissive to the man, Mm -hmm. right? That the man is supposed to lead and the woman is supposed to submit. And that's the, that's the highest form of the relationship. Da, 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 right? The new template is that we both have a relationship with spirit. We're both led by spirit. We're both led by God. And in that way, we both bring things to the relationship where we are a natural leader in that capacity, Mm -hmm. right? So this idea of one leading the other, right? That it's not that, it's collaboration, right? Um, The other thing is this idea that um, we only have one, right? We only have Mm -hmm. one true love um, that's going out. Right. And if, and again, if people want to operate in that frequency bandwidth, they will create that reality where they only have one. So please know that you can do that. Um, the you complete me. Right. So like that I am a half and you're a half. I know it's so funny. <laughs> my friend said, I can't have... wait to find the other half of my soul. I was like, that's not how this works. <laughs> not a thing. That's not, not a thing. This works. Can you imagine right. your soul all life is like, I right. have. So I always say one plus one equals three. Mm-hmm. Right. The only time one plus one equals two is when you're a half. Mm -hmm. So when it's a whole and a whole, you create a third energy. Right. That's the relationship where the relationship collaborates. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can create a baby in that space. You can create a mission in that space. Right. But you both nurture that space. It's the first time I'm understanding that. Yeah. That one one plus one one equals three. three. Yeah, Damn. that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got always you. just nodded. Yeah. I've always been like, one. Well, I was like, you, them, and I was like, God. That's yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. kind of what that's I, what I thought. Like, but okay, okay. Yeah, so no, you create... You, them, and your Instagram couples page. <laughs> <laughs> right. Your couples goals Yeah, page, your couples right. goals. <laughs> if you find yourself in your single season, if you're someone who is not in a relationship, I would love to have a little chat. So... I was single for about seven years, and during that time, I resisted it so much. For about half that time, I was like, get me out of this. I was trying to find the one. I was serial dating. I was just desperately trying to find my person, and about halfway through, I realized that this season was really here for me, and I had to choose it in order to make it as powerful as it really wanted to be in my life. So I embraced this in-between and went through an initiation that, you know, in coming out the other side, not only did I find my person, which wasn't the ultimate goal, but I did. And I now find myself in such a healthy relationship. And I know it's because I took that time during my single season to come back to myself. So if you are someone who is just feeling, you know, you just want to find your soulmate already, or you're uncomfortable spending time with yourself, or you're worried about what others think about your singleness, or you feel pressure to be in a relationship, or you have anxiety that time is running out for you to find the one, or you only feel validated by being in a relationship, or maybe you're in a relationship, but you're thinking perhaps you know, it's time that you really come back to yourself. Maybe you abandon yourself in relationship a bunch. So I would love to invite you to the Sacredness of Being Single program. This is a program that I created in the wake of my single season where you can release all judgment and pressure around being single, really define what your soul desires and begin to collaborate with your soul. I want you to take back the narrative of this season for yourself and really choose you. So this is a program that you can do on your own time, but we also have a two-hour live circle with me once a month where we can integrate, connect, heal, and come together to ask questions. We move through different exercises, writing, soul journaling. I also do sound medicine. It's really a very unique experience every single time that we gather in circle. So if you're interested in the Sacredness of Being Single program, please, please go to sacrednessofbeingsingle.com to learn more. I cannot wait for you to discover what's possible during the season. And I am so honored to help guide you on that path. I want to tell you about my favorite place, the Almost 30 membership. We are 
so excited to open up the Almost 30 membership to you all and invite you to a place that Krista and I have created and really on the regular curate so that you, the one who might feel different, who really wants to explore her curiosities in the woo-woo, the sciencey stuff, maybe human design, aliens, holistic hacks, like really serve that part of you that wants to be nourished. You can do so in community. This is a place where you can come as you are, be yourself. You can learn and grow. You can share vulnerably. You can connect with other like-hearted people. I just think it's literally the best. So if you're looking for a community for transformation, friendship, and personal growth, we got you. The Almost 30 membership is now open. What you can expect inside the membership, we have exclusive live workshops with our go-to guides, thought leaders, and experts uh, that lead us in transformative, paradigm-breaking, exclusive workshops. You are going to be mind-blown. We also have live hangs with Krista and I, which we just love. We love to come together for raw, fun, intimate chats with you once a month, and we answer all of your questions. We have bonus episodes. We have a meditation library. We have healing and movement sessions. We have sound healing. We have community calls so y'all can just connect with one another. And we have some live events coming up as well, which is free for members. So check out the Almost 30 membership by going to almost30.com slash membership. It is open now. We cannot wait to welcome you. Your best friends await almost30.com slash membership. Yeah, there's this, it's almost like a third entity kind of gets created. That's like the collaboration of like, you know, your union, the the mother, the father, and yeah, the the union. And, and And to that end, What's transforming is what it actually means to be in union, right? And this will go, this will take 200, 300 years before we um, change even like the nature of like marriage and da da da. And a lot of times when I talk about how like really the goal is divine union, a lot of people think that means, oh, you must be poly or Mm -hmm. oh, you must da da da. I'm like, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that as we encounter other people, right, we recognize that there is an aspect of that there is an aspect of God, right, that they embody. There's an aspect of God that we embody and that being in union with another is really seeing God in the other and having that reflected back to you. So it's always about deepening in your relationship with God. It's about being in union with God. And and this is really, this is a lot of the tantric traditions talk about this a lot, right? Also, I, I'll say that even how we understand a lot of the tantric traditions in a very like Western context is very distorted. I never mm-hmm. understood this concept that tantra is about sex. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's what we only understand. That's the only part yeah, we less, understand, yeah. exactly. right? Yeah, you're like sex poses. Right, right. And then when you l- really learn about it, you're like, damn, this is the most the beautiful way of life. thing. Yeah, ever. it's yeah. so <laughs> deep. It's, 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 again, it's about union. Um, and the other thing is that we're, we're starting, and this conversation is starting to happen more and more, is people are starting to realize. So, what a lot of people go through is they say, you know, well, we all have masculine and feminine within us, which is true. But we also have non gendered energies. We have energies that are gendered, and we also have non gendered energies. And the more that we allow ourselves to come into wholeness, right? It's not just everyone is part masculine and part feminine. There are so many frequencies on the planet. You know, there are so many different types of like etheric energies on the planet. And the more that we allow ourselves to bring, if we, let's say we experience them as colors, the more we allow ourselves to run our own colors, Right. And we become this like dynamic, radiant, vital, like version of who we are. And then we connect with someone else that is running their own authentic colors, their own energy. And then it's and then we come together and we have a shared like mission. Right. So the the relationship, the relationships that are coming online 
are more about like the mystical marriage. You know, it's that that that's it's it is. It's me, you, and God in this relationship, and we're led by the divine, and we're we're here to contribute something. And the two coming together are greater than its parts. Mm-hmm. But you're still whole within that. And one of the concepts that my teacher always talks about is that when you're truly in collaboration, when you're truly in union and you're being your full authentic self and someone else is being their full authentic self, there's always tensions and contradictions. So that tension is what gives birth to new creation. Mm. So that's something that that's a really like subtle but kind of advanced concept for the Aquarian age to understand that like truly being in union, that there is going to be this. And how do we be with that tension? How do we be with that place of like, this is how I see it. This is how I see it. And from those coming together, I don't you don't become the leader. Your way doesn't, you know, cancel out my way. We're not competing. It's within that tension that mm. something new is able to be born. So to me, again, that that there's just so much beauty that's available um, in that. And when you feel that, like when you're in a relationship with someone and when you're in union and you feel that and you get to see, it's not about me merging with you. It's like another way to look at it is the drop in the ocean, right? All the mystical traditions talk about like we're just a drop in the ocean. But the fear I think of a lot of us as as an identity, as a being, as a singular focus of consciousness is that when we get back, absorbed back into the greater consciousness, we lose who we are. And in the new age, the, the who we are is maintained throughout all of eternity. It goes through a purification, right? We lose like the ego aspect of, but that drop is in the ocean, but it's still there. It's still that drop. That wave still has its own, its, you know, its own expression. Mm -hmm. And that expression Mm -hmm. is what informs all that is. So a lot of the old spiritual traditions are a very transcendent type of spiritual tradition, right? Where where when we are moving into a sort of a higher consciousness, we lose our identity. Mm-hmm. What's coming into the age of Aquarius is that we maintain our identity while we move into oneness. So if you if you can see that as like one of the fundamental shifts of this time and then take that into relationship it's just so dynamic of what's possible. Mm. That's huge. Yeah, it's like shattering the <clears throat> the old paradigm of yeah, just kind of running when it gets hard mm. or feeling like it's not right when it gets hard. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. really being able to yeah. notice the subtleties in the type of friction or in that type exactly. of challenge that's yeah. like does this feel like growth? Right. Does this it, feel like an opportunity? Life-giving? Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Is this creative? Is it? Is there exactly. more available? Because these, mm. you know, in the super tradition, it says, you know, God is where the opposites meet. So mm. like where birth is coming together, mm. it's where like everything you know, everything you've experienced, again, it's not just I'm the masculine, you're the feminine, right? It's deeper than that. But everything that brought you to this moment, everything that brought me to this moment, we're here and there is something that can be new, born from all of the information, all of the experiences, mm. all of the the essence of who we both are to create something new. That's like the creation potential of divine union. Wow, powerful. So, so powerful. <sighs> My last question. Yeah, I just wanna talk thought. about beauty. Mm-hmm. I wanna talk about Adornment, beauty. Adornment, yeah. I think that's something where I'm like, Beautiful. okay, Love is an important foundational part of the universe, but beauty is almost something that I think a lot of women or people feel shame about stepping into or loving or appreciating. Mm -hmm. And so I'd love to talk about beauty. Yeah. Oh, I love this question. You know, my middle name, Hasna, means beauty. Mm -hmm. Um, And it means a type of beauty that comes from within. 
And the way that it's described in the Sufi tradition is that there is a type of beauty where one thing is beautiful and then, you know, by the same accord, something else is like unbeautiful, Mm -hmm. right? But what Husna means is it's this deeper type of beauty that exists in all things. You know, so it's not like this is beautiful Mm -hmm. and that's not beautiful. And to me, what that means is that there is an essence that comes through all things that are expressed. There is a life force. There is, you know, etheric information, right? Etheric creativity. And the thing about the, the etheric is that it is the realm of templates and blueprints. So when we think about, you know, a flower, the color that the flower has, the shape of the leaves, all of that is informed by the etheric templates, which are carried out by the devas, right? They are the ones that are, that allow the form of things that we witness to be what it is. So a waterfall or a mountain or, you know, the ocean, like these things take form because they have a blueprint that is etheric in nature and then the physical is informed by that. Mm. So for me, what beauty is, it's recognizing that devic intelligence in something, right? So does that have a certain quality of a feeling to it? A hundred percent, yes. It's less about, you know, this is beautiful and that's not, right? It's a feeling that comes through when you like the feeling that you have when you're in nature that you're like this is so beautiful i don't know why but there's just like i'm on this peak and i'm overlooking the ocean and then the the sun is out and you're like why is this so beautiful it's because it one because in that moment nature is recognizing you and that you're not separate Mm. you know so to me when I talk about beauty, I'm talking about tapping into that quality. I'm talking about tapping into the like the life-giving templates, the life-giving expressions that come through things, and that's what I'm attracted to. You know, I'm attracted to places that have that. And people think that means, oh, well if it's just this natural beauty, then it shouldn't be focused on hair or makeup i'm like that's not what that means <laughs> you know it could be like the way your hair moves or the way it glistens or you know it's informed by something that is so organic but it is about form right we witness it through form form is how it takes the expression that our physical eyes can perceive but our energy body is picking up yeah. on something else and what it's picking up on on some level we know this is nourishing. Mm-hmm. So when I talk about beauty, that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So we all have access to that. We all have our own like template, our own blueprint. That that template is perfection. It's divine perfection. And to the degree that we express that out, that determines when people are around us, if they can feel that vitality, they can feel that radiance, they can feel that essence coming through and how we choose to express that, you know, it's all different, right? But I do think sometimes some of the the more naturalist people um, believe that, you know, there's a limitation on how that can look and how that can feel. And, you know, anyone that knows me knows that I... I love playing in makeup. I love playing with clothes. I love playing with jewelry. I love shapes. I love the way things feel. I have invisibility cloaks. Like, you know, I program my clothes to like do certain things and to have certain effects. And, you know, it's being in character, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, it's energetic, it's vibrational, right? But at the same time, yeah, I'm drawn to things by how they, how they make me feel. Um, because of those qualities Mm -hmm. yeah like what's authentic to you and what's just serving an identity you feel like you have to have Mm -hmm. so if you're part of that organic type community it's like am i doing this because i really love to or do i want to serve the identity of being this person right that only wears or does Mm -hmm. this thing right absolutely and the thing is like one of the most interesting things i think about timeline jumping is like 
changing your outer appearance. I don't think people mm-hmm. know about that. Right? I thought about that with you. Of like, you've gotten even more beautiful. Oh, <laughs> thank Truly. you. Truly, like being in <laughs> being in New Earth Mystery School, <laughs> just seeing the videos, like the quality, it's gotten so much. It's just get, it continues to get better and better. But you just, I was like, wow, she's got even more light and radiance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can thank tell. you. Yeah, I mean, I I feel that. I feel like I've tapped into more of my own like my own taste, my mm-hmm. own purity, my own yeah. colors. Like I, f- I feel that sometimes when I, um, when I'm not doing anything in particular, like mm-hmm. I feel really beautiful and it's like, well, what is that about? You know? And I appreciate that it's a type of beauty that only certain people will see, you know, I can do the beauty where I throw it on and da 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 da. That's easy. You know, it really is, Mm -hmm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's that, it's this other quality of like radiance Mm -hmm. that I'm interested in. And like when I'm connected into like my own vitality, I feel beautiful. I'm not trying to be beautiful, I feel it. And then I see it reflected in other things, Mm -hmm. I see it reflected in other people, Mm -hmm. you know? and you can also share that with people. It's a thing that you can share as well. Powerful. Beautiful. This has been so fun. This has been so fun. <laughs> a good oh, two hours. Go all day. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, uh, two yeah. hours. Can you amazing. believe it? Tommy's like, I know it's been two hours. I was, wow. it, yeah. Uh, no, this has been so powerful and and I think the perfect time too. Mm-hmm. You know, we always talk about this. We've been doing this for seven years and we've mm. been um, following your work for a long time. But it's like this time is perfect mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. have you with us. Oh, thank you. Um, just as a last little closing, we're recording this at the end of 2022. Yay. Is there any just brief kind of, um, yeah, anything that you picked up on in your um, reading for 2023 for your community that you'd like to share oh, yeah, here? Yeah, absolutely. You know, <clears throat> one thing that I feel. Um, this is really significant right now on the planet is that there is a lot of pain um, and there's a lot of despair coming up and there are a lot of people hurting. You know, there was a night the other night where I woke up in the middle of the night and my heart was literally like it woke me up. My heart was aching so much. And you know, I was asking my angels, like, what was that? Mm-hmm. And they said, that's how people that are going to be alone this holiday are feeling. And they're Mm -hmm. like, can you create something for them? Sometimes I get that jolt of how people are feeling. And it is, um, it's really hard. You know, it's really hard. So first thing I want to just say is I acknowledge how much people are hurting right now. Um, I never want the things I share and the message to invalidate that or bypass that or make it seem like you know if you're not feeling like everything in the world is beautiful Mm -hmm. and airy fairy that you're doing something wrong absolutely not you know we are living in a really challenging time and for me the only thing that really gets me through is my tools you know it, it, it really is it's not that I'm like better or higher or anything it's like I will say this every single time it's really my tools that I come back to that allow me to navigate this world and I think one of the most important messages that I want to say to people is it's going to be really important to find community you know whatever that looks like it's going to be really important to find like-hearted people people that you feel safe with, people that you feel um, mirror your values. And for me, I'm so serious about that, that if it requires like a physical move, if it requires leaving my job, you know, once I got the clarion call that it was like time to start building community, I was like, I, this this is for a reason mm-hmm. because times are going to get even more challenging. Um, the other thing I want to say, so that, that was like, you know, framing it with that, right? Um, the other thing is it's really important to cut through the noise that is out there. There are a lot of people sharing what works for them. Um, a lot of people have a platform. Doesn't necessarily mean that the quality of mm-hmm. what they're sharing is helpful. 
you know, and that's not a judgment, right? But I really want to encourage people to, and this is with me too, if you follow my work and my work is not actually helping you, unfollow, mute, but like it's at a point now where to me, if it's not doing anything for you, move on. Mm -hmm. Find something that actually, like if you've been doing, it's not to say that these practices don't take time to build, like to build up to something. Right. Because there's no like you do it one time and that's the end. It's a practice. However, I think one of the most important things I did for myself is give myself permission to be like, yeah, that didn't work for me. And to go find something that actually does work. When I found the things that actually work for me, when like for me, it was really energy work, energy healing, working with flowers and flower essences. Changed my life. So there are tools, there are things that can absolutely transform, support you. When I first went through my spiritual awakening, like 12, 13 years ago, there was barely anything. Mm -hmm. Now there's so much available. There's so many resources. So I really encourage people to um, get out there, try things, experiment, see what works, find a dedicated practice that works for you. Um, so the, I would say these things to anyone, right? Now let's get yeah. to the juicy stuff. Um, so many people are having their gifts come online. So many people mm -hmm. are starting to remember that they're here for a reason, that they have something unique to bring to the table. I think that's kind of really where my, who I am starts to come into the conversation. Um, I was someone who was born with gifts. I turned them off at one point. Um, then I re, um, awakened them and then I started training. So I'm someone that really believes in having natural gifts, but also training. So wherever you fall in that spectrum, if you're like, I don't know if I, you know, da, da, da. like a lot of people are starting to realize that they do have natural gifts that are coming online. And when my gifts came online, they sort of crashed in on me. <laughs> and I started like hearing things, seeing things, like having dreams, seeing past lives all at once. Um, and it was a lot. And it's part of why I created my school so that people didn't have to figure it out alone and that mm -hmm. they could have a community of other X-Men <laughs> who, who yeah. were learning about their gifts. So I want to just encourage people to get past. I always talk about like coming out of the closet with your gifts. Um, I want to encourage people to really start to explore why they're here. When you have gone through a lot, you've had a lot of challenges, you've had a lot of trauma, maybe you've been misunderstood your whole life, you've been, you never feel like you fit on earth, you don't feel like this is your home. Once you find why you're here, what you're here to share, everything changes, everything transforms. So the one of the biggest themes for next year is make me an instrument. And I... There's so much more I could say about that, but what I what I will say is that the more that we are able to find how our unique channel works, how our unique like conduit works, what do we bring through? How do we access creativity? How do we access inspiration? What does that look like and what is the expression that we want to give? Know that there are people who need the exact things that you bring. If you would have told me like 20 years ago that I was going to be training people and psychic development and talking about flowers, I would have never imagined it. So the fact that I have a community of people that like want this stuff, they're here for it. I just want to encourage people to really find um, their medicine, you know, find what they're here to share. And it doesn't have to look the way that it looks for us right? Like we're visible. It can just be touching one person. It can be helping people in small ways. It's not necessarily about visibility. It's about impact. So find the ways that you can have impact on other people and get started. Yeah. We still need more people to step into their, their magic, into their work, and into their authentic work right? Not just what's popular or what you see works 
or what you have like oh maybe i'll come a, become a tarot reader because that's getting a lot of mm-hmm. hits and watches that's not going to make you happy at the end of the day yeah so find that thing that really like you love that thing that you would do even if the kind of like overuse phrase like even if you never got paid mm-hmm. for it right but find that that thing that like it just feeds you and nourishes you mm-hmm. and share that with other people. Yeah, that's what's amazing about our work. But for me personally, it's heartbreaking sometimes because I'm creating my blueprint. I'm following my blueprint, but then people get lost. Like I can watch mm-hmm. people get lost trying to follow my blueprint. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's like, ah, I feel there's not a shame, but there's just a, an observation that I have where I'm like, I'm potentially bringing people further off of their path. Yeah. You know, because I'm in this way as like a public figure, people could be following, trying to follow your blueprint yeah. and feeling more lost along the way. But mm. that's your own that's, stuff. I was like, yeah. I was like that's <laughs> not yours. Was like, well, that's and that's where we don't take responsibility. <laughs> yeah, that's none of my people. business. <laughs> <laughs> this has been so, yeah, thank you. so much fun. Oh, I really appreciate it. Yay. Yeah, I have so amazing. much gratitude for you and your work. It's been mm-hmm. so helpful for me, whether it's the Essences or New Earth Mystery School or even just following you online. Yeah. So I really appreciate it. Aww, and you. what can our community expect from you this year? Yeah. Um, oh, cool. So going into Time to this, plug, baby. Going, <laughs> yes. I'm like, I have to think about it. Like, what do we yes. have? You know, um, an important thing for me is like getting back out in the world. Um, I'm starting to do in-person events again. Um, and like even with resonance, my baby resonance is my baby. Um, we're doing we're starting to do like markets and stuff like that and wow. lending and you know, building a little booth. My team is like doing all this cool stuff. So getting out in the world is really um it's yeah, it's part of why I'm here also with this with you in this conversation. It's just to kind of like step out of my little my little bubble, you know, mm-hmm. even though <clears throat> even though my work sometimes can be pretty visible like I tend to stay invisible and I want people to see like there is a person like and who the person is behind all of this because people have I think people think I'm at home like meditating on a lily pad all the time you know and you know I I want people to see like what it looks like to be you know a channel you know I I, a channel but I still have my personality you know um so what like i want people to be able to see like how i do things not to not so they can do it like me but to just have permission to be like oh i can just do my own thing like i can just do my own way yes so i think it's important to be with people to kind of dispel some of the narratives and some of the ideas about who spiritual people are and how they move and what they do and how they talk and what they look like But to just be like, oh, you're just pretty relatable. You're kind of easy to talk to. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, so I do think it's important for me. What I've been guided to do is to start to be more in person. Um, So I'm excited about having in-person experiences, starting to do retreats and stuff Mm -hmm. like that with people. Um, The other big thing that we have going on is um, I have a practitioner program where I train people to become energy workers. Mm -hmm. Um, First, we go through learning how to heal yourself. um, And we do that through learning about the basics of energy work, energy healing, and working with flowers, flower essences. And then the second tier is if you want to become a practitioner in this program, if you are someone that feels that being a healer is your path and you like the work that I do, I created a practitioner program. I haven't done personally one-on-one sessions in so many years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People always ask me and I'm like, no, that's Mm -hmm. not really what I do. But I realized at some point, okay, I was like, well, it's time for me to train practitioners then who can do that. Yes. Um, And I created the system that I would have wanted for myself. Mm. One that incorporates plant spirit medicine and energy healing. I hadn't seen that anywhere. Um, so, you know, I'm always creating the thing that I would have wanted. It's called etheric gardening, and it's all about learning how to cultivate your own inner garden state and then allowing yourself to find like healing energies that you cultivate in your own etheric garden to bring into yourself for healing. 
but then also to offer healing out to other people through that. The third tier is actually teaching people how to have their own garden. So if someone's like, yep, this is my path, I feel it. Um, we have this program now. We're relaunching the first tier um, on winter solstice. Ooh, amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow. Can't wait. Thank you so much. Love yeah. this. Thank Bye you guys. so much. Thanks. We love you. See you soon. Thank you so much, Miriam. Thank you for coming in studio. Thank you for sitting with us. Thank you for blessing us with your presence and information. Again, if you love this, listen to the other episode we did on energy, energetics, all of that dropped Tuesday. Yeah. And thank you for being a part of our community. If you are wanting to go deeper with us, highly recommend joining the membership, which is open now you can join right now every single month we have live hangs with krista and i where we share really deeply and intimately about topics that um, we feel passionate about teaching on and being in community discussing we also have live workshops with incredible teachers and healers we have sound baths uh, in the membership it's really a holistic experience that so many hundreds of you have felt um, just been so supported along your journey and been an integral part of your growth. Yeah, I love our community so much. It's really helped me in my life and my growth. And I've loved that I have a safe space. Mm -hmm. You know, I decided it's safe and I created this space to be myself and to just talk about the things that I talk about with my friends, that I talk about with our community, the things that I'm going through, the things that I'm learning, the things that I'm really excited about. So it's like that early access to the Mm -hmm. teachings that we share about. And our community has been the reason why we are so special. So our membership, I highly recommend it. If you have any questions, just DM us if you want to talk about it. But we'd love to have you. Almost30.com slash membership to learn more. We will see you on the next one. We'll see you on the next one. We love you guys. Bye.